Once upon a time, there lived a king who had twelve beautiful daughters. These twelve princesses lived all together in a big, beautiful room. The king protected his daughters with his heart, and when they went to bed at night time, he did not allow them to go out. But every morning they would wake up to something very strange. The shoes of the princesses would all be worn out, as if they had danced all night long. The king had to buy his daughters new shoes every day. But the following days after, the shoes just kept wearing out. Neither the king nor his men in the castle could solve the mystery of the shoes. How is this even possible? How can a pair of shoes worn out like that in just one night? Your Highness, we can't understand. Finally, the king said, Whoever solves the mystery of my daughter's shoes will get to marry whichever daughter of mine he chooses, become my son-in-law, and get to be the king when I pass away. But he has three days and three nights to solve it. Otherwise, he will spend his life in prison. Many young men in the kingdom and even princes from other kingdoms came to the castle for the job. For days they guarded the door of the twelve princesses' bedroom. But after some time, none of them could solve the mystery. And shoes continued to wear out by the night. Finally, a good-hearted young man also wanted to give it a shot. And so he made his way to the castle. On his way, he met a lanky old lady who looked very poor. My dear child, I'm very hungry. Would you be kind enough to give me a piece of bread? The young man gave all the food he had in his bag to the old lady. She was very happy because the previous men who had passed didn't give anything. The old woman knew that this one was different than the others. So, in return, she gave him a magic cape. Take this magic cape. When you wear it, you will be invisible. When it strikes 12 o'clock at night, put the cape on, be invisible, and get in the princess's room. This way you can solve the mystery of the shoes. But be aware, do not drink what the princesses give you. No, oh, those nasty princesses. <laughs> the young man took the magic cape and went to the castle. And when he arrived, he said that he was there to solve the mystery of the shoes. First day, when he was keeping guard in front of the princess's room, the oldest princess came out with a glass of lemonade. You must be thirsty. We have prepared some lemonade for you. Please, have some. The young man forgot about the old lady's warning and drank it. Soon after, he was very sleepy. He fell asleep, snoring all night in the room that they had prepared for him. When it was morning, the young man stood up in a panic. I was supposed to wear the magic cape and get in the princess's room. On the second night, the young man once again kept guard in front of the princess's room. This time, another princess came out with a glass of juice in her hand. The young man was so thirsty while keeping guard and waiting for the nightfall. Without thinking, he drank all the juice that had been given to him. And of course, dozed off once again. The next morning when he woke up, he finally remembered the old lady's words. But be aware, do not drink what the princesses give you. There must be a sleeping pill in the drinks the princesses give me. At that moment, the king came next to him. 
Two days have gone by and you still haven't solved the mystery of the shoes. If you cannot do it today, you will end up in prison and stay there for the rest of your life. The king finished his talk and went away. The young man had to solve this mystery today. That night, for the last time, the young man kept guard in front of the princess's door. This time, the youngest princess came out with an orange shoes in her hand. But the young man was aware now. He took the glass, thanking the princess. And when the princess left, he poured the orange juice in a pot next to him. This time round, he was standing tall. The night fell and soon it was midnight. The young man put his cape on and at that moment became invisible. Slowly he opened the door and could not believe what he was seeing. All of the princesses were wearing their most beautiful ball gowns, hair and makeup done with their very new shoes. Let's see if the young man at the door has fallen asleep. One of the princesses opened the door and looked outside. And another princess put her ear on the wall. At that moment, the young man knew that he had to make some snoring noises. The oldest princess pushed her bed aside and clapped her hands three times. A secret passage opened in the place of the bed. The young man could not believe his eyes. One by one, all the princesses walked inside. And of course, the young man followed. The secret passage was opening to a stairway which had hundreds of steps going down. When they were going down the stairs, at one point, the young man accidentally stepped on one of the princess's skirts. Oh, somebody stepped on my skirt. Oh, nonsense. It was probably you. When the stairs had finished, they came into a forest. They went past tall trees with beautiful silver branches. The young man took a branch and kept following the princesses. After another long walk, they stopped on the edge of a river. In the river, there were 12 boats in the shape of swans, and in them, there were 12 princes waiting for the princesses. They got on the boats, and the young man got on the last one. The boat seems heavier than usual today, as if another person is on it. Strange. Oh, come on, stop dreaming. When they crossed the river, they came across a big shiny castle, and they could hear music coming from inside. When he looked through the window, the young man saw many people dancing. As soon as they entered the castle, the princesses started to dance. They would never get tired and just kept on dancing. Of course, their shoes started to wear out. The young man could not bear his hunger anymore. So he took a slice of cake on the table and started to eat. The youngest princess saw this. Hey, my cake! My cake is floating as if someone invisible is eating it! Come on, stop it with this nonsense. The young man took a golden cup from the table without anyone noticing. The princesses danced till the morning. Then they got on the boats, crossed the river, walked through the forest, walked up the very long staircase, and finally they came back to their castle. But their shoes were all worn out once again. The young man was very happy that he had finally solved the mystery of the worn out shoes. A while later, the king came next to the young man. Your time is up today. Did you solve the mystery of the shoes? Yes, your highness, I did. And so he told him everything. The king didn't believe him at first. But when the young man showed him the silver branch from the forest and the golden cup from the shining castle, the king knew he was telling the truth. And so he kept his promise and granted him the right to marry whichever princess he chose. 
The young man said that he wanted to marry the youngest one. The twelve dancing princesses were clearly not happy because their secret was out now. But the young man and the youngest princess got married and lived happily ever after. Once upon a time, there lived a very rich man. He had three daughters. Two of them were really greedy and self-centered girls, but the third one had a heart full of love and kindness. One day. Their dad received the news that his ships had sunk due to the storm. Poor man had lost everything and was left with only his little house in the village. The two greedy sisters were, of course, not pleased with this situation. All day long, all they were doing was sitting around and complaining. All the housework was left to Beauty. After a while, their father heard that one of his lost ships had made it to the harbor. He started to prepare to go to the harbor right away, and before he left, he asked his daughters, "What should I bring you when I get back, girls? Dress, shoes, necklace, and bracelets." And what about you, Beauty? What do you want? Just the roses, fine, Daddy. Their father arrived at the harbor after a long journey, but neither his stuff on the boat was there, nor was the ship usable. Sad and tired, he started his journey back home. It was almost dark when he reached the forest. The forest was dark and cold, and it was snowing. He rode his horse for hours and hours on the snow. Finally, he saw a castle with the lights on. He entered, hoping maybe they might help him. It was a weird castle. The lights were on everywhere. The dinner table was full of food, and there was fire in the chimney. But there was no one to be seen. He called out for someone, but no one answered. Finally, not being able to wait any more, he first ate some food from the table, and then he slept in one of the beds. When he woke up in the morning, he found some new clothes next to the bed. He went downstairs. A nice breakfast was waiting for him on the table. This castle should belong to a fairy, or she wouldn't help me like this. I wish I could thank her. When he was leaving the castle, he noticed the rose garden. I could not grant my other daughter's wishes. At least I can make Beauty's wish happen. He thought to himself. Just as he picked a rose, he and his surroundings shook with a loud roar. An evil-looking, lion-like beast appeared from behind the trees. The father almost fainted when he saw the beast. I saved your life. I fed you. I gave you new clothes. And here you are, stealing my roses. Is this how you thank me? The man went on his knees and begged him. Said that he wanted to take one of the roses to his daughter. What you did will not go unpunished. Please forgive me. I will forgive you with only one condition. Talk to your daughters. If one of them agrees to live. Here with me, I will grant your life. The man jumped on his horse and sadly headed home. When at home, the two greedy sisters listened to the horrific story their dad went through, but did not even hear the beast's proposal. 
But Beauty did not behave like her sisters. Daddy, if you allow me, I accept to go next to the beast. The two sisters immediately accepted her proposal because they thought that everything that happened was her fault. Sad and hopeless, her father took Beauty and head to the castle. When they arrived, everything was like before. The food was on the table and there was no one around. Just as they sat down and started to eat, the beast came out. Beauty started to shake out of fear. Because the beast was as scary as her father had told her, Beast asked with a soft voice. Did you come here with your own will? Um, yes. Then in the morning, your father will go away and never come back. When she woke up in the morning, Beauty knew that her father was gone and she found a nice breakfast waiting for her on the table. She wandered around in the garden for a while. She felt sad when she looked at the roses. Then she went around in the castle. One of the doors was full of roses. She wondered. She opened the door and peeked inside. The room was decorated just like she would have liked and it was full of books, flowers and musical instruments. She thought that someone who can arrange a room like this would not hurt anybody. Then she took a book. On the book was written in gold letters, My dear Queen, your wish is my command. I wish I could see my father now. As soon as Beauty said it, her father appeared in the mirror across the room. Beauty was so surprised seeing her father made her happy again. That night at dinner, Beast appeared again. Would you let me watch you, Beauty? You own the place. Why would you ask me? No. You own this castle now. If you want, I can leave immediately. Beauty was very surprised with his answer. I want to ask you something. Do you think I'm really ugly? At first she did not know what to say. Then she lifted her head to look at Beast and nodded as to say yes. Well, would you marry me then? This time Beauty answered harshly. No! Beast turned around sad and left Beauty alone. Beast was visiting Beauty every night at dinner and he treated her very kind. As the days passed, Beauty felt like she was getting used to Beast. I wish he wasn't that ugly. A couple months passed. Beauty was no longer scared of Beast. She even started to like him. But one day, she saw in the mirror that her father was ill. She raced next to Beast and asked him to let her go home, because she wanted to take care of her sick father. Of course you can go. But if you don't come back, I might die from sadness. I will come back after a week, I promise. Beast gave Beauty a ring. When she would put this ring on her nightstand and fall asleep, she would wake up back in the castle. The next morning, she woke up in her own bed in her father's house. She ran to her father at once. When her father saw her, he was so happy that he felt better. In the afternoon, Beauty's sisters, who recently had gotten married, came to visit their father. When they found Beauty at home, they were furious with envy and anger, and they decided to play a little trick on her.
Let's make her stay here one more week. Then the beast will come and kill her. The two sisters came next to Beauty, crying and told her that they didn't want to be apart. Beauty promised to stay one more week. Not long after, Beauty realised that she missed Beast. One day she saw a dream where Beast was lifeless on the ground in the castle's garden. She woke up in a sweat. What I'm doing is cruel and selfish. So she immediately took the ring off her finger, put it on the nightstand beside her, and she woke up in the Beast's castle in the morning. She waited for the beast all day long, but he was nowhere to be seen. She waited for hours and hours, but beast did not come. Suddenly, she went running into the garden. Beast was lying down lifeless on the ground, just like she saw in her dream. Beauty ran next to him and hugged him. Beast's heart was still beating, He rarely opened his eyes and spoke with difficulty. I thought you weren't coming back. I stopped eating and prepared to die. But I love you and I want to marry you. At that instant, something magical happened. Suddenly the castle became brighter and more beautiful. Beauty looked around stunned and then she turned her head back to the beast. But where the ugly beast was lying, now there was a young and handsome prince. When she saw him, Beauty started to cry. Who are you? And where did the beast go? Prince stood up and started to tell. I am the beast. An evil witch put a spell on me. She turned me into an ugly beast. If you hadn't said that you wanted to marry me, I would have had to live my life as a beast forever. When she heard this, Beauty was much happier. With her good heart, she found true love. Beauty and the Prince got married and lived happily ever after.